We will, we will. We will, we will rock. Okay, one more time. We, go. we will. We will All right, good job. Give yourselves a hand. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> you know, this is an interesting phenomenon. Um, most of you knew the words of the song and were able to sing along. And something happened in the room when we all sang something that we knew and recognized. Even here in a room full of strangers, there was an underlying connection. Something told us that we all had something in common. We just created something together in a large group collaboration. I think some of you might have been proud of yourself, and I know I saw a few smiles over there in that area. But today's theme is time, so we'd like to offer up a little montage, a little mashup, if you will, of what we do when we're not in the classroom. And we're calling this One Million Years in a Nutshell. Feel free to boogie. If you that's the million years part. Hey, Brittany. Mummification equals immortality. Your brain's pulled out your nose by an embalmer. Everybody's favorite line. Okay, it took me forever to grow those arms. Just saying. We go way back in the decades. That's all the same person. <laughs> Shout out to the Baya Tapestry. Everybody's favorite. So that brings us to a quote from the very controversial figure, Napoleon Bonaparte. Music is the voice that tells us the human race is greater than it knows. It's perhaps my favorite quote by him because it highlights a third of what I feel is sort of the golden trinity that distinguishes us from other creatures. Art, storytelling, and music. And combined, they're a powerful tool for collective memory. And over time, those memories are accumulated into shared knowledge. Now this process used to happen rather slowly and locally, but with the democratizing technology of our era, our music, our stories, and our art can be produced and shared with a global audience generating conversation and inspiring others to create. Now Herb and I have both been teachers for about 20 years, and as such, we've always felt pretty comfortable with the storytelling aspects of our profession, but I have to admit, when you're caught up in the throes of academia, in historical debate and analysis, you sometimes lose touch with that essential part of history. And it's the part that makes it beautiful and interesting. It's the stories that link us to those big truths, the archetypes, the myths, and they, they help spark empathy with our distant relatives, but also connect us with the people in our present world. Yeah, so we started to notice while we're teaching that with the omnipresence of the internet and the eventual ubiquity of smartphones and Wi-Fi, the kids were getting connected 
to other more dazzling things like ninja cats on YouTube. We all things that they found to be more engaging, if only temporarily, than the stories we were trying to tell them in history class. Which brings us to yet another lesson from Napoleon. One must change one's tactics every 10 years in order to maintain one's superiority. Although, if he was in my classroom, it would be every 20 minutes he'd have to change. Yes. So how could we compete for the attention of our 21st century students when they'd rather be watching videos on demand or logging onto social media sites? How could we inject some fun into the learning without sacrificing academic value? And how could we rekindle our own passions for the subjects we teach? Yeah, so we knew we had a lot of rethinking to do to make our storytelling relevant to the times, a task which seemed daunting at first. Which brings us to our first big C of today, create. Um, now teachers and students can, are, and should be creating content. We should be producers, not mere consumers. And anyone of you in this room can be a teacher. You can share information and knowledge and of course, sometimes wisdom. Yeah, any of us at any time can be students when we're absorbing, assimilating, learning, and remixing information. And what's more, this process can be constant and unrestricted by boundaries of geography or time. And we found that creativity is like a turbo injector for the teaching learning process. It expedites it and makes it more efficient, effective, purposeful, and of course, enjoyable for all. Yeah, so when we create, when we teach, the information we're trying to convey actually becomes imbued with wit, passion, humor, and ultimately human compassion. So how so? When you create something for someone in any form, you are in a very real sense reaching out to them and exerting your energy on their behalf. Or in our case, we're trying to make the learning process an enriching experience for a student. So that is actually a compassionate act. And I think it's a great example for our students to follow. When we first began this project, we had no idea what would become of it. We were just sort of two teachers with an affinity for music. Of the 80s. Yeah. And an annoying sense that we had to mix it up a bit. And what better way to do that than sort of combine our source material with what we were passionate about, music. So we pulled together our skills and resources and came up with our first parody music video. It's about Henry VIII and it's to Abba's Money, Money, Money. And I have to admit that the lyrics just sort of hit me as I was driving in traffic, cranking Abba gold. And, um, and there, that's what it became. Henry, Henry, Henry had so many wives that had to die. Henry, Henry, Henry had so many, only one survived. Six wives in all, all the things they could do if they hadn't married Henry, that was their downfall. First was Catherine by name, she was from Mata, gone in Spain. Oh, poor Kate. She married Arthur Henry's bro, and when he died, loved Henry so. Would have to wait. Took her as his lawful wife, but that caused her a lot of strife. She couldn't have a son, you see, their only child was Mary. Henry, Henry, Henry had so many wives that had to die. Henry, Henry, Henry had so many, only one survived. Six wives in all, all the things they could do if they hadn't married Henry, that was their downfall. Most infamous was Anne Boleyn, but from the start she couldn't win. Well, of course, she was attracted to the king, though wouldn't love unless a queen. So her divorce, she promised Henry a male heir, but had Elizabeth with red hair. I have a little neck, she said, right before they chopped her hair. Henry, Henry, Henry had so many wives that had to die. Henry, Henry, Henry had so many, only one 
share another quote from Napoleon. It's lovely. Imagination rules the world. And one interesting thing about Napoleon is that he truly believed that the word impossible simply did not exist 
in his vocabulary, nor should it exist in anyone else's. That with talent and will and luck, you could defy all odds and achieve great feats. Okay, which brings us to our second big C, collaborate. When I came to her with my first song, I had no idea what was possible with our limited resources. I thought we could, I don't know, record the song, I'd play it on a boom box in the classroom, kids could sing along. But soon I had these fanciful ideas and they met with Herb's technical know-how. And it would explode into over now 50 plus um, individual music video projects. Yeah. So Amy and I could be considered a good example of what collaboration can accomplish. Um, we started out as two history teachers just trying to make something more of our classes. And we actually ended up um, influencing classrooms around the world. So Amy is a proven master of musical parody, as you saw in the mashup. She's a fearless performer. She'll wear anything, do anything to make the lesson. And she's also the curator of a bewildering number of historical-themed costumes. Yes. Guilty as charged. And Herb had an extensive musical background with production experience. Yeah, so collaboration takes creativity and multiplies the result exponentially. So I think we both agree that individually or alone, we probably couldn't have come as far as we have. But the combination of talent, energy, and positive intentions have taken our humble skills and touched many more people than we could have ever imagined. Our skills have sort of infected the other person as well because Herb is now penning lyrics and I am sort of dabbling in the music production. Yeah. And the collaboration doesn't end there. What about collaboration with our students or even a collaboration with a global audience? Yes, our most popular song so far was co-written by a student of mine. And every day I get ideas from, from our students, but also from now from fans on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. And we have to remember that the people that we often talk about in history class were mere teens and young adults when they changed the world with their accomplishments. And it reminds me of this group of amazing high school animators I met at a conference who'd, were, who'd scored jobs at Pixar. Because now students can post work online, they can garner critique from professionals in the field, and even work for companies. I'd like to introduce you to a few of the students I'm collaborating with at the moment. This is Charlie, and she's a budding graphic designer. She's designing our logo, but also this quite adorable little manga version of me, which will soon become a full-on animated uh, character in a video. And the next is, is Jake. He's an aspiring model and actor, and of course, can you guess what Shakespearean character he's going to play? You know? <laughs> yes, it's Romeo. And um, finally, this is really amazing and ironic, but this is the daughter of a TED speaker today, Dr. Richard Pyle. This is Kara, and she's an amazing, talented photographer. And her photo shoots with me have been used for publicity all over the world on web interviews that I've done in Italy, Sweden, all kinds of places. Yeah. So YouTube gave us the opportunity to share our work with the world. So when this happens, the entire endeavor becomes more authentic because now you're opening up your work to a global audience. So they can give you feedback and can also give you valuable insight into the real world outside of the classroom walls. And when you sort of take that risk and reach out, really surprising things happen. For example, fans by will of their own have translated our videos into French, Spanish, German, Dutch, and now Cantonese. Yeah, and high school and university students from around the globe send us their videos that have been inspired by our work. This particular girl has a lot of them. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> some, I think she just likes to dress up like me. But uh, some just love lip syncing. And this next um, clip is from... Um, some kids in Australia who went that extra mile, you know, to cut out a giant <laughs> cardboard flea and rat. And he said he's missing school today to see the live stream. So I hope he doesn't yeah. get in trouble. So they're watching it right now. <laughs> and there's also been numerous and uh, quite moving comments from some of our viewers. Yeah, the, some like the mom of an autistic boy who said the videos really reached him. Or the girl who said she was going to major in, in history in college because she was so inspired. Or the man from China who couldn't believe the creativity afforded the teachers in America. He dreamed of sending his own children to America to study one day. So this next quote from Napoleon kind of sums up what we're kind of about, and that's, we must laugh at man to avoid crying for him. And this brings us to our last big C, which is celebrate. You know, some people have called us digital bards or 21st century troubadours. And that's interesting because we are, we're celebrating, we're paying homage to that tradition 
which reminds us that humans are drawn to music and storytelling. In a wonderful series called How Art Made the World, Dr. Nigel Spivey postulated that, uh, that when stories are connected to music, like in hula, or to an image such as in a film, like one of Edgy's films, um, we tend not to forget them. They hook onto our emotions. Yeah. In the pre-Gutenberg printing press world, um, the Greek chorus, the medieval minstrels, troubadours, bards, griots, they all contributed to collective memory by singing the tales of heroes or epic events. So we've kind of taken that torch, I guess, and we firmly believe that every textbook should have a soundtrack. <laughs> right. Yeah, I like that one. You know, this, this whole endeavor has sort of been a worldwide celebration of, of teaching and learning and history. You know, of 80s music and pop culture and of creativity in general. Kids write us that our videos help them pass a test, but better yet, make them want to investigate further in a topic. And teachers say that they bring an element of fun into the classroom, but sometimes students leave singing down the halls. So generally, people have received their work in the spirit in which it was created with good humor and good intentions. But occasionally, we do get a disgruntled viewer who is miffed that we didn't state the exact length of the Bayou Tapestry down to the tenth of a centimeter, or we failed to delve deeper into the complex historiography of a subject. But most people realize that we can only do so much within the time constraints of an 80s pop song. <laughs> <laughs> There's limited words, limited rhymes. And really, what we aim to do is to inspire curiosity, um, creativity, and to give students a pathway into history. You know, sometimes we're so busy celebrating all of these extraordinary things, we forget to celebrate the actual time that we have on this planet. And <clears throat> a few weeks shy of my 36th birthday, I found what no woman wants to find. It wasn't a wrinkle. It wasn't a gray hair. It was a lump in my breast. And when the <clears throat> doctor, excuse me, when the doctor called and, and sort of matter-of-factly but sweetly said, I'm afraid you have cancer, I felt time stand still for like a millisecond. But then... Elusive time flashed before me with a thousand racing thoughts. What was I going to tell my husband, my kid, my students? What if I never got to go to all the places I want to go, like Madrid, Scotland, and the Ice Hotel? What was it going to look like without hair? Which brings us to the wigs. I decided to start an outrageous collection of wigs. And let me tell you, I learned a lot. Did you know they're all named after girls? There's like the normal ones, Pam and Joni, and then the longer, more glamorous ones are called something exotic like Serena and Claire. Yeah, or Angelica. So what I noticed is that when Amy would have on the different wigs when we were filming, she'd actually take on a different personality with each wig. So I ended up naming them, this is the St. Thomas Aquinas trio, or Vicky, Angelica, and Bambi, and they're kind of a reoccurring uh, feature of our videos. Yeah, but to get to that point, I actually had to write the songs. And that's where every cancer patient's good buddy chemo popped in because I had a really bad case of insomnia due to all the treatment. And at first, I sort of used that time in the middle of the night to wallow in self-despair and go to what my friend called the dark side. But then I got all Skywalker on the situation and <laughs> decided to use that time wisely and create poetry, or in my case, lyrics, that had to do with what I was teaching. I tell you, I've never felt so creative. I mean, the words just sort of flew off the keyboard. Yeah, so she'd come in Monday morning with six new songs that she'd written and ready to record and produce and film. And it was really <laughs> a lot of work as far as the production goes. But I knew that the entire process, the planning, the writing, the filming, the dressing up in the wigs and the costumes, all kind of helped to cheer her up and take her mind off her discomfort and ultimately give her hope. It was really the only time I felt beautiful. And to be honest, all that fun we were having completely overshadowed my inner anxieties. So although neither of us are what you would call uh, math people, oh, no. we'd like to leave you <laughs> with an ode to a fellow Tedster in the form of a Khan Academy equation. You've all seen Khan Academy? Well, hopefully. Yeah. If you haven't, check them out. Yeah. But here's the equation. OK, it's cancer plus insomnia minus hair for both of us. Plus creativity, collaboration, and celebration equals crazy music history videos. Oh, there's a little more. <laughs> Shout out to Khan. I mean, one last thing. So today we've, we can see that Napoleon's clever quips can teach us some life lessons. But I'm going to ask my daughter, Guinevere, to help us remember that what we really need to know, we already learned as children. 
And the first is don't be afraid to color or draw or whatever tool you use outside of the lines because that's where all the creativity happens. You'll have more fun if you share. And finally, play in your work because teaching and learning and living should be a joy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.